숨은 닫어. 나도 봐. 공짜로 집안에 소독도 하고. 어, 맥나, welcome. Thank you. We saw Parasite. We did, yeah. Directed by and written by. There was another writer, but it was written and directed by um, Bong Joon Ho. From what I've heard, he mixes up like the style and genre of what he does. Yeah. Which is kind of. He's a mixer. Yeah, which you know is kind of refreshing. For sure. I was a bit worried yesterday, I'll be honest, because it's had so much hype. It's had the Oscars, um, and there's been like crazy hype since then. Yeah. So I did wonder if I was going to come away feeling disappointed, but I wasn't. And like there is a certain adrenaline rush to watching the film that that I think makes it really hard to come out without something having, having happened to you, if that makes sense. You got that cortisol hit. I proper did. Yeah. I was made, like, you know, I was being a really vocal member of audience, probably pissing off a lot of people in the BFI. You were one of the gaspers. There were a I few... I totally there. was. Yeah, yeah, you are a gasper. Yeah. Like, I... I... <laughs> But I like that when you're in a cinema and you get a good, honest gasp or a like a gut reaction. That's what that's kind of the point, right? That's what you want when you go to the cinema to watch it with people. You want to get that communal, um, those communal emotions and actual outbursts of emotion. It's great. One of the things I really liked and I appreciate is that type of really good storytelling where you lay good foundations and you're engaged with the characters and you're and you you're interested all the way through but then it's progressively ratcheting up i thought it did a very good job of ratcheting up the everything yeah i think it is basically like car gears and it was it literally just went steadily first second third fourth fifth and you're like completely flying right by the end <laughs> I'm deadly serious. There's a quote, basically, from Bong, where it says, while uh, he was asked, basically, about how he felt about his, his film being up for an Oscar, and he said, the Oscars are not an international film festival. They're very local, actually. Oh! <laughs> Genius strategy there to win an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we'll show him. We'll give him an Oscar. Thank you. I, I will drink until next morning. Thank you. We have this incredibly rich family. Mm. And like, they look like they're free and they can do whatever they want because they have all the money in the world to mm. buy them whatever they want. But at the same time, they're not because they have to play by certain rules within that space. Is it okay with you? It starts with them getting an English tutor for their daughter, which is how that the poorer family enter their house to start with. When was the last time that you watched a funny film about something like class class struggles? Mm, Downtown Abbey. <laughs> yeah, it's really I haven't funny. seen any of it. Is that funny? It was. Uh, I want to. I just said that. <laughs> what other class it's struggles? Definitely not funny. It's just not. It's, it's not. It's serious. not comedy, is it? I'm Lord Wilcock, and I'm the new owner of Downtown Abbey. I love it here. So you start off with like a whimsical comedy. Yeah. And then it becomes like a dark comedy. Yeah. And then suddenly it becomes a horror, and then suddenly it becomes psychological thriller. There's also like a, a moment where there's like a Western moment where you have like the two, two poor families in the basement having like a standoff. Mm. 
I've always liked films that do a, that are kind of, and it could be any genre. Like I like that a, a genre film that, so like, let's say, let's, so because you could take a film like I Daniel, I Daniel Blake. Yeah. Which is just overtly, all right, this is a social commentary film, right? Exactly. And this is what it is. Yeah. And it's kind of reality, you know, kind of no nonsense. Always a drama. Always Quite a drama. serious. <laughs> and I liked it. I thought it was, it was a, I like that film. And you and me, uh, you suggested to me The Chambermaid. Yeah. Again, that similar type. Yeah. I like those types of films. It's kind of similar in theme, where you've got someone who's a chambermaid yeah. in a luxury hotel. So you've got that classes meeting. Right, thing. really similar. Yeah. And I like those films. And I think they're important. And just talking about this stuff is, is what's good. So you need to, you know, just talk about this stuff and get it out there because, you know, people in those situations are struggling, right? Yeah. So that's one of the good things about film. But I've always liked films that, let's say you take an action genre like Robocop, for example, yeah. and they're doing social commentary, yeah. but it's just in this fucking crazy, uber graphically violent, you know, over the top sci-fi high concept, <laughs> like I like that stuff. Uh, so what I liked about this film is that it's kind of that I like that genre mixing. So it's, you know, all the genres we spoke about, but it's also it has this social commentary. Um, so it's doing a lot, right? It's just doing a lot of things, just spinning a lot of plates um, and just melding really well together. And importantly, so it's something that I would get from this, which I wouldn't necessarily get from The Chambermaid or I, Daniel Blake, is I love that progression of story. So that, for, for me, is like that real sweet spot of, okay, tell me how fucked up society is. I want to see that. But then also, more selfishly, indulgently, just engage me in a story that I'm really kind of like, you know, hooked into. Mm, and that's going to entertain me. Entertain me. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm like an indulgent little prince, you know? Yeah, because I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit around in bathrobes all day, right? Drinking tea. I think there's like lots of world spice in this film. Yeah, it's like when you get the spice mix that you don't know what's in there. It's like you take a Ken Loach film and you take the socialist drama from it and you're like, okay, this this is a bit British. I'm going to add some, like, what, what spices would you add to that? Oregano. Oregano. Not that I know much about Korean cinema at all, but it didn't... It didn't feel like something where I was like, this is identifiably <clears throat> Eastern, this is identifiably Western. So that, the, yeah, that's good. And that's good because he's done that, he does that. So in, and I'm particularly thinking about Snowpiercer and Ongja. He does that really good uh, casting of like, so in Snowpiercer, he'll get Captain America, Chris, is it Chris Evans? He's got, he's the main, he's the lead, uh, but you've got Tilda Swinton doing a super uber middle-class British. He's got character speaking Korean. Like he just does a real good mixed bag in 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 that film and Ongja, I think, as well. Like, yeah, he definitely has those sensibilities. Yeah, where it's just like pulling all of these elements and kind of breaking all the rules. Because mm. I do think there's a bit of a problem with with filmmaking in the film industry. Whereas you really do have like a sort of sense like this is an American film, this is a British film, this is a, a French film. Yeah. And it's got that feel about it. And For I sure. It's been 100% agree. Overly romanticized. Yeah. And as soon as you're someone who has to like go between two things, that, that becomes like a bit difficult. And there's definitely like people who are like, oh, well, I'm sorry, our audience would not really relate to this when it comes to producing yeah. things like that. Yeah. And what I love, he's like, it's, it's something that I think I felt quite personally. Where I'm like, well, brilliant. You've just been like, well, fuck it. I'll just make a really good film that isn't identical. And I'm going to take, yeah, and I'm yeah. going to take gonna stuff gonna I like from rules. here, stuff I like from here, actors I like from here, characters, you know, exactly. 
hundred percent appreciate that. Like, and I think that's going to be kind of the future now. Yeah. With things like Netflix, and you're just looking at what Netflix are doing with like even just Spanish speaking series, and it's all those barriers are kind of falling by the wayside, which is great. And you get the sense that people are not trying to produce like the gatekeepers in the industry. 그 말을 하셨던 분이 누구였냐면 제 책에서 읽은 거였지만. Yeah. Thank you so much. When I was young and studying cinema, there was a saying that I carved deep into my heart, which is the most personal is the most creative. 그 말은, uh, that quote was from uh, our great Martin Scorsese. So. <laughs> So let's go. So we were going to geek out on some of the stuff that you were talking about, like the foreshadowing or those little details that you yeah, were getting. Right. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Some of those examples? Yeah. One of the first moments where I really felt that foreshadowing come into play was that this um, family kind of infiltrate the rich family's house by first the son getting a job as an English teacher, then the daughter coming in as an art therapist. She, in turn, then gets their driver fired. And that's almost acceptable because he's kind of cracked on to her. So you don't entirely like him. So you don't mind him. Oh, no, I liked job. him more after that. I'm like, yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> She's hot. That's how you do it. <laughs> right. I was taking notes. Like, no, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm on your side. I, yeah, I was like, you filthy pig. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. But um, yeah, all right. So like, yeah, but I mean, he didn't do it in a like he. But this is again, just kind of going like the writing is really good there. Just to let's go look at the writing. So it's like the way he's doing it, he's definitely d doing it, but he's, he's doing it in a way of, of and I think I felt like that was some South Korean cultural stuff of like, can I take you home? Yeah. But then we I found out later that when she tells the mum that he offered to take her home, she's like, oh my God, so that he'd know where you live? And I I didn't know that would, would be a thing because, you know, if if I was a driver and I was driving someone home, I would say, do you want me to drive you home? Yeah. And not think it was a thing. Yeah. So that was like a little probably culturally subtle thing that you wouldn't... But he's obviously kind of... You can tell like there's some... He's, he's making some subtle advances there for sure he's crossing the line but it's like he's crossing the line but it's not it's done subtly so that's sophisticated writing like which i which is in, throughout this film I, th I thought and i actually i liked how sometimes the writing is subtle but then it's sometimes just overt and that's fine like you know sometimes it's just yeah a bit on the nose but it's just when you get on the nose throughout the whole you know how long do you think this film was I think it was long, wasn't it? And this kind of just did subtle and then on the nose and sometimes and it was just like overt and it's fine. It balanced it up. But anyway, so you, you were talking about, so he's hitting on her. And so he loses his job. That's still okay. When the, they basically bait the housekeeper mm. and make her ill so right. that she ends up losing her job. It escalates. It escalates, and there's a shift there. And when yeah. she walks, it's done so simply, where you've just got this one shot of this lady kind of dragging her bags and looking just just so sad yeah. that you can't feel anything else in that shot, but like, man, you're on the shit. That you kind of know, like, this lady's gonna come back. Did you, th yeah, you said that, I, I didn't, I didn't foresee that one actually. Right. Yeah. What was one that you saw? A signpost. Oh. The dad. The dad. Like I, I got the, I got the hints of. I got, I got hints of and signposting of his underlying malate, like discomfort at actually what his philosophy of life is and where he is in life, and that pretense of being okay with it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can you? I thought he was going to go bit? ballistic. So, so obviously when he's under the table and just hearing the dad talk about him, he talks about how he smelled at that point, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He says he. There were some things in the car when he's initially talking with the when he first says, "But you love her," so you just think like, "Oh, there's a dig there. Why is there a dig there?" Yeah. Well, he shouldn't be doing that because he's trying to get in with him. Yeah. But he couldn't help himself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really subtle, yeah. but like I caught those. I'm like, oh yeah, he's, he's like, 
it's all a, a facade. Or a lot of it is a facade. And that's such great writing. Yeah. Because he's like gently sabotaging himself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There, there's definitely a lot of stuff like that. And I think like some of it is so subconscious that it's really satisfying. And that's why you can get away with some seriously slapstick moments that are on the nose. Yeah, and just like... So much fun. What works really nicely in this film is like you've got those levels, right? So you've got the, fa the, the family on the hill. You've got the um, Parasite family, the main family that we're with in the basement, just about underneath street level. And then you've got wacky dude all the way subterranean. Yeah. Like he's mold dwelling, right? Yeah. He's, un he's underground. Totally. So you've got those levels and you get some really nice cinematic moments where you, you're seeing visually those levels. Yeah. So like when a, parent, when a family's running away, they escape the house because the family came back early with the money, came back early. And they go down into where they actually live. You see them going down those levels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So visually, like, there's a lot being done with levels. There. Class levels as well, right? Like, it's... Those class levels, man. It's that strata. Everywhere. It's that strata. Now I'm going to not be able to stop seeing them. There's some discomfort there, obviously. Yeah, there's, and there's a lot of, of conversation stuff. around that, which is all really interesting. And so he's obviously just hit a nerve because it's, it is amazing what this film has done. Like, this would be a film like I'd imagine you know, that I'd watch because I'm kind of like, I like kind of these kind of obscure but good films maybe. I thought it'd be, it, it can't, it's, it's amazing that it didn't just become an obscure good film that you kind of just hear about from people that, you know, just are into film. It's amazing that it's kind of gone, and it hasn't, I think the theatre release here in London is not massive and it's not going to get, and the Oscars will help, but it's not going to get like a wide, it's not, gonna, it's not like a Marvel film. It's not going to get that type mm. of, yeah. right? But it's amazing what it's done in theatres. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, and it's amazing what it's done um, just kind of like in terms of what you're hearing people doing. Like, so I read the day like the Oscars came out that there were people in like New Malden where there's a big Korean community just like having parties to celebrate this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. 그래도 그 돌멩이 때문에 부모님 얼굴도 뵙고 좋더라 건강들 하시고 이거 이거 없으셔도 귀엽지? 네가 내 대신 얘 과외 선생님 좀 해줘라 영어 대학생인 척하라는 거야? 넌이 좋은 실력으로 왜 믿음이 맨날 떨어지냐 아이씨 죽을래 서울대학교 문서 위주 학과 뭐 이런 거 없나? 나이 기준이에 수석이 박아 있다 What was cool was about this film I thought is that that is kind of how like we like peg people like subconsciously, sure. we're all trained to be like, oh, you're sure. so-and-so. I can build a whole story from you, right. from the job you do and where you live, and that's it. Right. That's uh, it. Yeah. And we don't really find out anything more about these characters. They're all outlines, but we fill in all of the rest of the story because that's what we do in real life. Mm. Now, when you meet the dude in the basement, though, he's a whole different kettle of fish. He's just like, <laughs> do you know, like... <laughs> I mean, I think I know your answer, but would you recommend this film, Magna, to people? Yeah, definitely. I'd recommend it, and I think that I would probably like to watch it six months from now, again, <clears throat> to see what my reaction is. Because I think I've really, like, gone, gone with the hype, I'd say. Yeah, I think that's a, good, that's a good shout. Like, I think watching it again, for sure. And it makes me want to watch... Uh, not really Snowpiercer, but The Host again, because I did think, one thing I thought this was different to The Host, I thought the storytelling was just like you said, no fat, really, really tight, very well constructed. And it's just like, yeah, I don't, whereas with The Host, I thought was a bit more, it, this seems much more laser focused, which was great. So I would, and I'd like to, uh, it makes me kind of, and I want to check out some of the, his other films as well that I haven't seen. Um, but I would, it, this would be worth watching again, and I would for sure recommend this to people. 
friends yeah. of mine and any just general people and people with money as well yeah watch it and then figure out do you want to be a hustler or do you want to yeah that's a good point what do you think like what what do you think like how do you how do you has this changed your uh, your perception of living Ooh, wow that's deep oh my god we get deep here wow yeah, it looks all colourful and stuff, but sometimes yeah. it gets dark I might and go and have a midlife crisis after answering this question. Um, Can I film it? <laughs> well, I think it's about, like, being... I think it's more like we live in a world where you have to hustle. Yeah. But the hustle is not always right. Or everything. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. The so hustle I, I, isn't going to... Bring you happiness. I think it is a middle way thing. Like I, like I said that kind of jokingly, but you know, it's kind of usually with these things. You've got the two extremes, right? You've got like don't do fucking anything, nothing matters, and you've got like the hustle is all, like get your status, get to that position, and then you're going to be happy. Is bullshit, right? So yeah, it's just like all right, you're somewhere here, but um. More, one more interesting question, because this film is doing a lot of things, so I think it's allowed two points mm. rather than one. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Which because is... You can make three points. Wow. You're so yeah, kind. yeah, yeah. You're very kind. I wanted to say that to just anyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Say that to all the ladies <laughs> who come on your show. <laughs> mams. I call them mams. Mams. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we... I'm a respectful gentleman. We are from third world countries where, <laughs> where sometimes that kind of language is used. Um... But no, okay, so the other important point is crossing the line. So what do you think about crossing the line? Because that's the question that this film asks. Should you cross the line? What, and not? stab people? I mean, like... I mean, it's crossing the line with my smell or like with a blade in the chest? Well, I mean... Or just maybe a little sly comment on, on your how you think about your wife. I guess... What are you talking about? It's different lines maybe if he'd crossed the line earlier in his life he wouldn't have ended up crossing the line that badly <laughs> towards the end right yeah so this is the thing it's like if you yeah if you you can tell yourself a story and if you go too much the the way of like none of this stuff affects me even though it is and yeah. you do too much of that yeah. eventually yeah, if you're not crossing lines and actually fighting for yourself in a way and fighting for what you want and actually admitting it, then, yeah, maybe you're not crossing that line and you're just kind of going deeper into this falsehood, then it's probably not a good thing, is it? So always cross the line unless you're on shoot. Yeah, pick the lines maybe you've got to cross and then just do them kind of with... Do them with um, consciousness, conscious line crossing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just crossed the line. Uh, I'm going to bring out a, a book on Buddha. We should just go through that. <laughs> Shall we do a meditation to end? We this should program? just meditate. Yeah, just us meditating for like um, an hour.